And one of the biggest decisions for parents is when and how to pass their homes on to their children. Here to answer these important questions is Pierre Letourneau, Vice President, High Net Wealth Planner at TD Wealth. Pierre, great to have you with us. Let's jump right in. What are some of the most common questions you get when it comes to this issue? Uh, thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. Um, I, I guess when it comes to the family home, a lot of times, you know, clients aren't necessarily concerned about income tax because we're all familiar with the principal residence exemption. But in, in some provinces, they are concerned with probate fees, which is another form of taxes. Now, that, that tax varies from province to province, so it's not every province that has this issue. But uh, for the ones where there are probate fees, it could be a significant amount. So, so, so clients are concerned with that. And the concern that, or the question I get most often is, well, should I, or when should I add my uh, my children on title to my my family home? Is is that a smart move? And if so, at what point in time does it make sense to do that? All right, so let's dig into that. What point of time does it make sense to do that? What are some of the complications that can arise? Yeah, there's quite a few complications. And in fact, most of the complications, sometimes it could just offset the benefits. So we know the benefits are potentially avoiding probate. And it's much simpler to transfer, you know, a, 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 an asset like that uh, by having a joint owner um, and, and having your children on title. But some of the complications are that you may create a, a larger tax issue, a capital gains tax issue, because as you add your children as joint owners of the property, they may have their own principal residence. So this property is now a secondary property for them. So if there's any appreciation in the value of the property, there is gonna be tax ramifications for them when the property is eventually sold. So that, so we know that tax rates on, um, on, on income tax rates are much higher than probate rates. So, so that, that problem could become uh, much bigger very quickly. Secondary, a second issue too that comes up or is more of a practical issue. Um, when you're adding your children on as on title of your home, you're now exposing that asset to their potential creditors. So that could be, you know, a financial institution or an individual that has loan funds to them. It could be a former spouse if there's uh, if they're going through a divorce or or if they're involved in, in in a lawsuit and there's an obligation to pay a certain amount. Any creditors could potentially have access or at least request that the home is sold to to fund uh, any of those obligations. All right, so those are important considerations. Obviously, what about in a situation where both parents have their names on the home, but one passes before the other? Does that introduce complications to the scenario? Uh, normally, it doesn't because most uh, most uh, spouses would hold the property jointly um, with right of survivorship, and so that's that's a key concept because if uh, if if joint owners are holding the property with right of survivorship, when one person passes away, their interest in the property automatically passes on to the surviving owner and therefore bypasses the estate of the deceased uh, spouse and so, so doesn't attract any probate fees. Um, where there can be a complication is if instead of holding it as joint tenancy, as joint tenants, the property is held as tenants in common. So it's another type of structure. We don't typically see that with spouses, uh, but in that situation, there's no right of survivorship. So when one person passes away, their ownership interest in the property passes through their estate and then attracts uh, probate. We mostly see this type of structure when maybe siblings are holding a property together or, uh, or business partners. They're likely to want their ownership interest to go to their spouse or their children or other beneficiaries. So they want their ownership interest to go through the estate. Sometimes, Pierre, I'll hear people raise the issue of saying, well, I'll simply just sell the property or gift the property to my children. Is it as simple as that? What do you need to be aware of there? Yeah, so, so that can be done. Uh, now, obviously, when you're doing that, legally, the property is now in their hands. So, uh, so they're, they're free to do what they want uh, with that property. So, so obviously, hopefully you've got other accommodations and you're not relying on that property or perhaps you can maybe have a, a life interest in the property. That should be part of, of that transaction. Now, there is a difference between selling and, um, and gifting and that may depend on the province that you're in, but one of the considerations are family law considerations. A gift is, it can be dealt with or, or can provide some protection if there's a breakdown in marriage after the gift, um, uh, whereas that protection may not be there on, on a sale. 
there's also land transfer tax to, to consider as well too, particular for Ontario. In Ontario, land transfer tax is based on the value of the consideration that's received for the transfer of the property. So if you're gifting an asset, there's no consideration going the other way. So there's no land transfer tax in that, in, in that situation. If you're selling the asset though, there is consideration because you're selling it for a certain price. And so that will lead to land transfer tax in Ontario. Yeah, we've only got a minute left with you, but I've still got a lot of questions, but we'll get this one in. Obviously, we talk a lot about the principal residence exemption in this uh, country. Uh, what some people may not know is you can sort of choose, a res if you have multiple properties, maybe the cottage can become a principal residence? Yes, it can. If As long as you're uh, meeting the requirements or ordinarily inhabiting the the, the property is the term that's being used, and that threshold can be met if you're using the property while on vacation, on weekends. Um, so, so yeah, there are many individuals in, in Canada that, that may have, maybe have multiple properties that could uh, meet the, the test. And uh, the one caveat, though, is you can only designate one property for any given year uh, as your principal residence. So, so for a lot of uh, clients that we work with, it becomes a, you know, a mathematical game, trying to figure out which property has appreciated the most to determine and which one you want to use your exemption on. The other factor you may want to consider is uh, timing of sale, right? If you're selling a property, if you have two properties that have the same amount of gains, but you're selling one now and you plan on holding on to the other one for another 15, 20 years, you may want to use your exemption now and pass on the tax, the tax bill to when you sell that second property. So that's another consideration. A lot of great insights there, Pierre. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.